It won't move. Howard, mute yourself. There we go. Apologies. Great. So uh, we're going to cover two um, different regulatory matters in today's presentation. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the net energy metering proceeding at the CPUC. And then Todd Edmister is going to cover um, PG&E's 2022 energy resource recovery account forecast proceeding. Uh, next slide, please. So I wanted to update the committee on uh, the issuance of a proposed decision in the NEM proceeding. Uh, that happened on December 13th. Uh, the proposed decision uh, would establish a grid participation charge, uh, which our residential customers would be paying on average $52 a month um, just to be connected to the grid as a NEM customer. Um, it would also reduce the export compensation that NEM customers receive down to the CPUC's avoided cost calculator rate or ACC rate. Um, these uh, combined, uh, there are more features in the proposed decision, but these I think are the two uh, most key issues in the proceeding. Oh, thank you. Uh, that, that would really affect uh, our customers and um, have a chilling effect on the installation of new solar and solar plus storage systems uh, in the state and in our service territory. So we've been very active in the proceeding at the PUC. Um, first, uh, the, the board had issued a NEM resolution, uh, and so we sent that, a copy of that, to the CPC's commissioners, as well as the governor's office. Um, we also filed comments jointly with San Diego Community Power on the proposed decision, and those were filed on the 7th of January, and we made a few different arguments. Um, we made the argument that the grid participation charge actually violates federal law, because it discriminates against one technology type being uh, distributed generation. Um, as a corollary, we also argued that all customers, including distributed generation customers, should pay all of the non-bypassable charges. So, um, you know, in order to, to make a credible argument that, that grid participation should not apply, we thought it was only fair that other charges that, that all customers pay for today for a lot of the kind of social policy programs that the commission funds um, should be paid by all customers and nobody, including solar, should be exempt from those charges. They're, they're much more limited though. Um, and then the Sierra Club in the proceeding had put together a proposal uh, for export compensation and we made the argument that that should be adopted. So instead of the commission's approach of using the avoided cost calculator, um, export compensation would actually be provided at um, a much higher rate, which is the electrification rate that the utility offers. And then it would be stepped down over the course of 10% um, per gigawatt installed uh, down to the avoided cost calculator rate. So it's a little bit complicated, but uh, the big picture story here is that it's a gradual shift, eventually landing in the same place that the PUC did, but also will incentivize much more installation of solar and solar plus storage in the state before you get down to that much lower rate. It gives time for folks to adjust. Uh, we also conducted uh, several oral ex parte meetings with commissioner's offices where we had the opportunity to highlight our comments and our arguments. Um, and we think that we were well understood. It was nice to see that many of the offices had actually read our comments prior to us going in. This is a really um, high importance issue for the commission right now. I should note that the commissioner uh, who was lead on them um, back in December when the PD was issued is no longer at the commission. And so we have two new commissioners, one of whom is a new president. Um, and so the, the membership of the commission has changed. It gives the commission an opportunity to do a reset and to really rethink where they want to go on them. Um, and so the commission is taking a little bit more time with this, which I, I think is good news because they really are hearing a lot of concerns from many parties. So oral arguments had been scheduled in the proceeding. Those were actually taken off the calendar and we are awaiting a new schedule for those. 
Um, and we are also anticipating that we will either see a revised PD, which would be a rewrite, rewrite by the administrative law judge who issued the original PD, or an alternate PD, which would mean it was a rewrite of the PD by a commissioner, or we may actually see both. So at this stage, it's still unclear when the PD will be voted on or whether this PD will be voted on. Um, but I think there's a lot more activity to come in the next couple months, and we are happy to keep the board updated as we learn more. Okay. Um, yeah, so Todd is actually going to take this next slide on the 2022 era forecast. Sure, so just to level set, um, the era forecast is a PUC proceeding that sets PG&E's rates for the following year. So it's filed in this case in 2021 to set rates for 2022. And um, it, it sets two rates of real significance to us. The first is it sets the, the PG&E bundle generation rate. And of course, that's the, that's the rate that, that our EBC generation rate is, is pegged to. Um, it also sets the power charge and difference adjustment rate and the, the PCIA is essentially a stranded cost recovery mechanism for, for PG&E for investments it made on behalf of customers who subsequently. Um, it's basically a bunch of what are now above market investments in utility owned generation and uh, utility scale renewable contracts. So things like Diablo Canyon or the hydro plants on the utility owned side, um, things like early generation uh, contracts with with wind and, and solar farms uh, on the on the contracted side, um, the money that we get from PG&E uh, to cover our our costs or not is essentially the PG&E bundled rate minus the PCIA, right? So you take the you take the PG&E bundled rate of whatever it is, say it's fifteen cents for for kilowatt hour for for bundled customers. Um, what EBC gets would be that 15 cents per kilowatt hour minus whatever the PCIA rate is. And so, um, crudely speaking, as the bundle rate goes up, we're better off, all else equal. As PCIA goes down, we're better off, all else being equal. Uh, and so, some good news to report um, coming out of this last era forecast proceeding is, is that we're going to see both the bundle rate going up significantly and the PCIA coming down significantly. Um, the, the bundle rate is gonna go up by somewhere on the order of 30% and PCIA is gonna go down by somewhere on the order of 40%. And so the, the bottom line is that we're, we're gonna be in much better position this year relative to last year in terms of how much money we get back per kilowatt hour from PG&E. Um, part of that is offset by the fact that energy prices are going up. That's a big reason why we're seeing both the PCI go down and, and bundle customer costs go up. But to the extent that we have long-term contracts in place uh, for energy, we're, we're, we're covered on that as well. So on balance, very good news coming out of this proceeding. Um, we got a proposed decision earlier this week uh, that again was very favorable. Uh, we'll see if there are any changes to it, but we do expect it to be voted out uh, on the 10th uh, of February with new rates to go into effect on March 1st. So let me stop there, see if there are any questions or Nick, if you wanted to embellish on any of that. Yeah, you know, I think the only point and we highlighted it at our January meeting somewhat is, well, you know, this means that our 2022 and, and to some degree our 2020 three fiscal years will be will look very good. Um, this is very much a rebound effect. So, you know, we'll, we'll have very strong 2022 and I would expect that 2023 absent, uh, you know, some, some new dynamics at play, we'll see a, a, a rebound and we'll see the PCIA go up precipitously. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens with Generate. So, that's all to say that, you know, it's all, all the more reason why it's important to take a longer term view around the PCIA, which we do, and, and around our financial planning. Thank you, Nick. Um, okay, so 
I'm just going to get let people know we now do have members of the public at the meeting. Thank you very much for attending. Where we are is an item three. Um, we did not have any members of the public during the public comment portion on non agendized items. So uh, after this agenda item, and we take public comment on this agenda item, I will go back and open up the floor for any public comment on non agendized items. I'll give the opportunity to the public one more time to be able to weigh in. I didn't call for that earlier because we didn't have anybody uh, besides the staff and the, and the committee members here. So um, at this point in time, what we're going to do is take clarifying questions from the committee members. We will have public comment uh, by, the, uh, by the people who are in attendance. Thank you for being here again on the agenda item. Then we'll have a discussion and then we will provide for a recommendation. So uh, uh, committee members, would anybody like to have uh, any questions answered or anything clarified before public comment? I see a hand raise, uh, member Martinez, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Melissa, you had noted that there was a change in composition in the um, CPUC commissioners. Can you talk about, I don't know, any guesses as to how the uh, two new members might be um, looking at this issue? Well, um, we don't have a lot of insights on the two new members yet, um, but what I will say is uh, President Alice Reynolds um, comes from the governor's office. She was the governor's uh, energy advisor before. Uh, so she's very well steeped in energy matters. And we believe she has a really good understanding of um, all the different kind of aspects of this issue and, and the people and um, the organizations that are at stake. And so just having that understanding is I think already a good thing. Um, and then John Reynolds is the other a new appointed commissioner. Um, he also used to work as a commissioner's advisor at the PUC, so intimately familiar with energy policy and with issues like this in the past. Um, so in both instances, we have commissioners um, that are well steeped in these matters, which I think is a great start because it is complex and it's great to be able to make your arguments with folks that, that understand the issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. And member Cal, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and um, thank you, Melissa and Nick, for the uh, update on the NEM proceeding. What more, I mean, uh, you know, I, I gave public comment uh, earlier this month at one of their meetings, and we sent in, you sent in the EBC resolution, and, and the City of Oakland, I think City of Berkeley sent in their own resolution to commissioners. What more can we as, as EBC board members or as local official, elected officials do to put pressure on and steer the, the commission and the commissioners in the right direction. I, I mean, I, I think there's been a lot of pressure already for the public and the solar community that has led to um, uh, a delay in making a final decision and that, that's a good sign. But I'm just, we, 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 I wanna take the advice from you all, what more can we do? What more can we as local elected officials do? Yeah, that's a great question. I think at this stage, I think we really have made the arguments, they've been heard. And I think the commission has a good sense of where the different parties stand as well as other uh, interested uh, uh, parties throughout the state that may not be parties to the proceeding. Um, I think we need to wait to see what the commission's next action is because we may end up seeing a revised or alternate proposed decision that, that aligns much more with where we would want a decision to go. And if so, then we rally behind that. And if not, then we continue to make the case as to why the revisions aren't the right ones. So it's a little bit hard to say before this commission has weighed in to know where they're at in order to kind of plan our next advocacy steps. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Member Kalb. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Please raise your hand, or I believe is it, is it star six? If you're calling in by phone. I believe it's star nine to star raise nine. your hand, and then star six to unmute yourself. 
Okay, thank you very much. This um, time, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, At go this ahead. time, the public can make any comments on this item. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, for the committee members, um, it, was there anything in terms of feedback or um, that you would like to provide uh, in receiving this report? And what is the will of this committee going forward? Shall we uh, provide this as a, a, a an informational item to the full board or not? And I will take a uh, member account, please. Is that if is, is that hand raised from before, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was from before. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, so it looks like we don't have any uh, particular discussion, um, any further discussion um, from our committee members. So we will um, move on to our next um, agenda item, and that is non-agendized public comment. And going back to that for the one member of public that's here today. Would the one member of the public like to comment on any non-agendized item? Jim, do you have anything you would like to add? Please raise your hand if you do. No. Thank you very much. So seeing no public comment for non-agendized items, we will move ahead to item four of our agenda, which is the committee member and staff announcements, including request to place items on future board agendas. Would any uh, board member or staff member like to speak at this moment? I see hand raised, member Cal, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I believe this was already stated at the last board meeting. Um, just to confirm, we're, we will have a, some presentation on our, on our, uh, the, the emissions and emi the emissions and emissions intensity of, of our, of our bright choice mix, and that whole discussion will come up at the next board meeting. Is that correct? Nick. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we will be doing. Is that going to be through the chair? Is that going to be an informational item? Will, will it be followed by a decision for the board to make in the next, the following month, or, or you're not sure? It, it will be presented at the board meeting. It, there's no action item required. It's an information item on policies that have been adopted by the board previously. Thank you, Member Kalb. Um, are there any further announcements or requests at this point? Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to our next uh, agenda item, and that is the adjournment of the meeting. Uh, the time is 1227, and we are adjourning our meeting now, and our next meeting is currently tentatively scheduled for Friday, Friday February 25th. Uh, 2022 at noon and the location will be once again via teleconference. Thank you very much for all those that have, enjoy, uh, have joined us today. Please keep safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the next meeting, this is January, past January oh, 25th, so that's a uh, mistake. The next meeting will be executive board will be the 17th. No, no, oh. No, it, it's this year, January, the, the next It'll be the 16th of February. No, no, the yeah. next executive more being will be the 25th of February. The board oh, meeting okay. is the 16th of February. Our executive committee, we will reconvene on the 25th of February, the fourth Friday. Oh, I have a different meeting. Okay. All right, the fourth Friday, the fourth, okay. The 25th, yes. So that should have been February instead of January on the agenda. Oh, yep, it yes. does say. Yeah, it is. Oh, it does say. It's correct. Oh, yes. So that we'll was... see each other again uh, before our next executive committee meeting on a regular board meeting as, as indicated. And our next um, executive committee meeting is currently and tentatively scheduled for Friday, February 25th, 2022 at noon. 
And that of course will come with an agenda item and be noticed for the public uh, a number of days in advance. Be healthy everybody and this concludes our meeting. Thank you. Thanks.